what's up everybody happy wednesday hope all you're having a great day so far today getting into this episode of gh um i enjoyed this episode for the most part i really did i am so pissed i'm like you know cody and sonny was over there you know with dante and sam at the penthouse cody was helping them move in and whatnot well not helping them move in but helping dante move in um Sonny done brought over some damn lasagna, and I'm looking at that dish. I'm like, hold up. He got the good foil up there. I said, wait a minute, Sonny. Why the hell wasn't I invited? I like lasagna, and Sonny looked like he could make a mean fucking lasagna, too. Because I, listen, when I seen him bring that lasagna over, I, my, my mouth just watered. Like, I don't eat lasagna on a regular basis, but when I get it, I fuck that shit up. <laughs> It be having that good Italian sausage in there, that cream cheese. Listen, I will fuck some lasagna up. I will tear it up. That baked macaroni and cheese. Listen, you can't have me around that type of food. It listen, y'all, I, y'all would be fresh out of luck if we had to share a pan. All y'all would get is a little scoop of corner. That's all you would get because the rest will be mine. You see, listen, I can't help it. Those those is like my favorite dishes right there. I can't help it. Um. He had that lasagna all smothered and covered. I'm like, shit, I need to book me a flight to Port Charles because Sonny, me and you need to go into business together on a restaurant or something and get this popping. But you need to be my personal chef. I will empty out the entire bank account to pay your fees because, listen, you could quit the mob business and just be my personal on-call chef. Like, let's just put it that way. Um, I am glad, though, that Sonny got a chance to talk to Cody alone and put his little punk ass in his place about Spinelli because Sonny was like, listen... I don't want no problems for Spinelli and I don't want nothing bad to happen to him. Steer clear. Like he just put uh, Mr. Cody on notice and I'm glad he did because I got sick and tired of Cody trying to blackmail Spinelli whenever he felt like blackmailing him. Like, no, sir, go sit your ass down and leave my guy alone. Please and thank you. Next time I won't be so nice about the shit. (laughs) I'm just saying. Um. And Cody was like, oh, no, he was like, no, I, I, I listen, I totally get you. You know, he was trying to talk all nice. Yeah, you better get right. You better get some sense. Um, And of course, by the time Sam and Dante came back from the kitchen and stuff, Cody was like, oh, I got to go. Yeah, I bet you do. Get get to going. <laughs> get on out of here now. You've been warned. Um, And, you know, Sonny was like, listen, I got to go too. I got to be out. I'm leaving y'all alone because Sam and Dante, you know, they got the champagne popping. Um. You know, she was pretty much telling Dante, listen, make yourself at home. This is your home now. I want you to feel like this is your home. Dante can't afford no penthouse. (laughs) I'm just saying he can't. I mean, they do look cute together, Sam and Dante. They do. They look cute. But my thing is, with the history that Sam and Jason have, I wouldn't feel comfortable. I mean, the penthouse is beautiful. Who the fuck wouldn't want to live in a penthouse? I'm just saying. But we would have to sell that shit and get something else because... Or at least remodel it or something because it's too much history in that penthouse between her and Jason. You know what I mean? For me to live comfortably. It reminds me so much of Dallas. You remember after Jock Ewan died? JR and them father? <sighs> I was so sad when Jock died. Um, Obviously, I was too young to watch when it originally aired. So I always caught the reruns when I was a kid. Um, I love me some Dallas. But when Jock died, remember Miss Ellie? She married... um. What's his name? Lil Clayton. Clayton Farlow. She married Clayton. And remember Clayton, when he moved into um, South Fork Ranch, he could not stand living there because every corner of that ranch screamed Jock. They even had a big ass picture of Jock up on the wall and Clayton couldn't stand it. He was like, listen, he made any excuse he could to go on business so he wouldn't have to stay at the ranch. I feel that. I totally feel where, where Clayton coming from. And that's just me because I don't know how Dante going to be able to do it. The same way Sam had issues moving into Lulu's house because every inch of that house screamed Lulu. Every inch of that damn penthouse screamed Jason to me because he had it for so long. He owned it for so long. He lived there for so long. The furniture, all of that stuff just screamed Jason Drew because Drew was there too during that time um, with that new furniture they got up in there with that brown leather couch because jason never got that brown leather couch i think drew ended up picking that out him and sam at one point um but yeah i you, i would tell sam listen boo <laughs> we gonna have to remodel this house 
Like we're gonna have to remodel. We're gonna have to change up the decor. You know, put up some new paper, some new wallpaper, or some type of new fresh paint, something because I got to make this place feel like me. You know what I'm saying? Like add a little touch of me, a new couch. I, I would have to. I for me to live there comfortably, I would have to jazz that shit up. The bedroom, everything. Like I don't want no traces of Jason or Drew up in this place if I'm gonna live here. I'm just saying. We got to switch it up. I know that might be hard for Danny and all them. Maybe they used to it. I don't know how they feeling about nothing because we, you know, they they wasn't let out the attic yet. So we don't know how they feeling about shit. But <laughs> at this point, I'm like, listen, we gonna have to switch it up. But I think they cute. I don't know how long they gonna last because every time I see Sam around Drew, she be having these lingering looks at him like she still got some feelings. So I don't know what's gonna happen with them. But you know, kudos to them for moving in together. So anyway, moving on from that, I am getting so tired of Victor Cassanine, old pervy ass. He is giving such pervert granddaddy vibes. Like, I'm just saying, like, what is wrong with this man? No means no. Like, the women of Port Charles don't want to give you no coochie, so go sit your old ass down. They don't want you. They, ain't, they not trying to give you no sexual healing. <laughs> like, go sit down somewhere. They don't want you. Lucy don't want you, sir. She got a man. She don't want you. Let Leave, leave her be. Like, he all sitting over there trying to rub lotion all on her back and stuff. Lucy was like, oh, that's okay. That's <laughs> I felt bad for Lucy. I wanted to blow my whistle and yell rape so bad because <laughs> sexual assault something. Because I just, like, she just felt, it looked like she just wanted to scream for help. Like, she looked violated. I'm like, Lord. Oh, my God. Like, that man just give just pervert vibes all the way around. Like, sir, she don't want you touching her. <laughs> she looks skeeved out every time he come around her and didn't try to touch her and flirt like sir go go get get your ass on somewhere with this she don't want you so he's sitting there oh come to lunch with me she said no no thank you she <laughs> lucy was coming up with every excuse in a book not to talk to him not to have lunch with him not to nothing with him and he said, oh, we could make this a business lunch or whatever. We could call it a business lunch. So she was like, uh-huh, got to go. And, you know, he grabbed her wrist all aggressive. I'm like, sir, sir, get your hands off of her. Get your hand off her, play. Get your hand off of her. So he's sitting there, going to sit there and try to threaten her. Oh, don't, I'm very fond of you, but don't waste my time in business or anything else. And then got the nerve to kiss her hand. She need to hire security. I am so glad Lucy ran to Anna. She was like, listen, I'm done with this shit. <laughs> Lucy said, I'm done. I want out. I want out. Lucy was like, listen, I can't do this no more. Lucy told Anna, like, I'm pulling out of this shit. And she was like, Anna was like, what the hell going on? Like, what do you do now? She was like, he invited me to lunch and stuff. She was like, oh, go to lunch. Anna. Anna. No, the get the, the jig is up, Anna. You're not going to keep placing my boo Lucy in, in harm's way like this no that man is a pervert <laughs> no hell no no mm -mm. fuck all of this you know so she was like oh you need to go to lunch with him to get whatever information you could get out of him <sighs> ma'am what information do you think victor is going to slip up and give her because what i've seen of victor he's not that stupid he a pervert and a little freak but he ain't stupid he usually too moves ahead of people. So if Lucy starts saying certain things to pump him for information, don't you think he gonna see through that? Like she up to something? Like, come on now, Anna. No, you you putting her in danger now. <laughs> like Victor is nothing to play with. If he even get the hint that she's pumping him for information or she trying to get something out of him, he'll probably try to have her killed. No, hell no. Anna tripping. Cause Anna was over there at the cemetery. Somebody done defaced Peter's grave or whatever. Hallelujah. Um, so she was over there talking to Robert or whatever, trying to bring him in on this, talking about, oh, I need your little black book of contacts or whatever. And he was like, um, yeah, I'm not giving you that until you tell me what you need it for. So she was basically like, listen, I'm trying to take Victor old ass down. And he got all giddy like a little schoolboy. Oh, I want in. I want in. She said, shh, calm down. Like, <laughs> Robert B. Yeah, I love the two of them together. I love their whole chemistry. Like, even after all these years, even though they're not, like, romantically together no more, the friendship chemistry between them is so dope. Like, I love it. Like, they can still be the best of friends even though they haven't been together in years. You know what I mean? I love it. Robert was so souped to get in on this, but Anna said, listen, I don't need the WSB getting wind of this. I'm pretty much going rogue on this one. So, you know, Robert was like, all right, I got you. I got you. He was like, listen, just be careful. 
Like he pretty much gave in a quarter. He said, listen, I'm giving you this quarter. If things go south, call me. OK, and I will be there. And he pretty much warned her. He was like, even if you do manage to take Victor down, your dealings with Valentine." He was like, listen, drama is always going to come with the Cassidy. So just be wary of that. And I'm pretty sure she know that. But, you know, the heart want what the heart wants. She want Valentine. That's her boo. That's what she want. And that's what she going to get. You know, that's the kind of man that she want, I guess. You know, they been have feelings for each other. But I love how Robert look out for her, though. I really do. I love how Robert does it. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, speaking of Valentine, you know, he's sitting over there interrupting um Alexis's lunch or whatever. Cause he and Alexis ain't stupid. She said, "What you want from me?" <laughs> Cause she was like, "I know you want something. What you want?" Basically, he want her to steer the police investigation into Ava's attack into another direction using the invader. And he was like, "Oh, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, jeopardize your journalistic integrity or anything like that. But I need you to just kind of move it, you know, away from us, away from the cast and I, for the good of the family." And Alexis was like, where the hell is all this coming from? Like, why do you care about the good of the Cassidine family all of a sudden? Like, what the hell going on with you? <laughs> like, she was like, since when do you give a damn about the what's good for the family? Since when? Because at this point, he told me we got to do what's, what's best for the for the family. No, this is just him trying to, you know, appease Victor for the time being because Victor, you know, got him on a short leash or whatever. And of course, Victor come waltzing his ass in there. Oh, I couldn't have said it better myself. Victor, go, go, go get on somewhere. So Victor sitting down or whatever after Alexis and Valentine leave. He's sitting down for a little meeting of his own. I'm like, who the hell he meeting? And, and come and, and walk Sonny fucking Corinthos sitting down i'm like what the hell y'all about to have a meeting about probably spencer maybe but i'm like what other what other business could you two be possibly talking about but i always do enjoy the um interactions between victor and sunny because over the years sunny never had really much interactions with the cassadines besides nicholas he never had much interaction or no interaction at all with them like he never interacted with helena before which baffled me because i'm like they have connections so i'm they have mutual connections, so I'm kind of surprised that Sonny never crossed paths with Alexis. I mean, not Alexis, uh, Helena. I'm surprised about that. Because somebody was in my comments talking about, oh, they did have scenes together. I have searched, 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 and searched, and then went into my memory bank. I have never seen Sonny around Helena at all. I have never seen the two of them share not one scene together. Ever. Because I guess it wasn't warranted, because, you know, the Cassidines were never really in the mob, I guess, so... Since they weren't in the mob, there was, I guess, no reason for them to interact too much or at all, really, other than Spencer. But he always did his stuff with Nicholas. Um, But, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing these scenes between Sonny and um and uh, Victor, because I think it's going to be quite interesting. Can't wait to see what's what's going to be the, the topic of conversation between those two. So anyway, moving on from that. um, So Matt shows up at the hospital. And he's talking with Britt and Austin or whatever because he want information on Cody. And Austin was like, listen, I don't even know that dude that well, so I can't tell you nothing about him. So Austin takes off or whatever, and he meets up with Mason. And Mason, you know, him and Mason start talking and whatnot. And Mason makes it ab abundantly clear that he had nothing to do with what happened to Ava. I believe it. I believe it because even though, like, Ava saw him and, you know, Austin together and stuff – I don't see him going to those lengths to shut Ava up, attacking her with a hook. I don't see him doing all that. That's a little bit too out in the open and too messy. And he seems like a very kind of private kind of person. Like, he don't want to do something like that. Like, he'll probably rough you up a little bit, but I don't think he would do something as drastic as that, you know, on the quarter main grounds. Like, I don't see him doing it. Besides, Mason is more like a day player on this show anyway, so I doubt that that would be the big reveal that Mason was the one who did it. So, no. he I definitely believe he ain't had nothing to do with that. Um, but I want to know what the hell going on between him and Austin. Like, what is going? What is this mystery about Austin's past? Like, what is going on? Um, because he told Austin, like, listen, there's going to be a patient coming in next week, and you're going to take special interest in this patient. Um pretty much telling austin like you ain't got no choice you're gonna do what i tell you to do and because austin was like listen i'm tired of looking at you <laughs> like i'm tired of you being around and mason was like well if you do what the hell you need to do do what i'm telling you to do you ain't got to worry about me you ain't got to see me no more so Britt come up in there or whatever um and she recognized mason and stuff like that from the hornet star open mic night when he was there um and he scurries on out of there and stuff like that 
I am not surprised Britt done snitched to Cody. Because she was like, oh, what did you do now? He was like, oh, what I do now? Because she was like, oh, Max Scorpio was over here asking questions about you and stuff. He took an interest in you. I'm like, Britt, why is you telling him that? Little snitch. Because Matt came over and wanted to talk to her about him or whatever. And Britt was like, well, I don't know a whole lot about him. You know, and she was wondering, like, if Matt's interest in Cody has anything to do with his past with Dominique. And Matt wasn't going to answer those questions. He just, you know. He was like, all right, goodbye. You don't know nothing, so bye. We don't need to talk no more. Because <laughs> Mac is, is just running around trying to get whatever info he can. Because Felicia was talking to Maxie and stuff like that. And Maxie sitting there talking about something. Oh, well, if I wasn't seeing Austin or whatever, I would take another look at Cody. Maxie, you need to go sit down and get that coochie a rest. Like, out of all these men you've been dealing with the last couple years, you need to put a pause on the dating scene. I'm just saying. Especially from Cody. Like, what you want with him? He couldn't even buy you a bowl of peanuts at the floating rib. So what you want with him for? Please get that out your mind. And Felicia quickly told her. She said, I, I, she said, no, you don't want to mess with him. Um, Absolutely not. So Felicia, you know, brought her up to speed about him possibly being Mac's son and stuff like that. So Matt came over and they were all talking about it or whatever. But he said it is a possibility. You know, he doesn't know for sure. That's why he's trying to get whatever info he can. But he wants to run, you know, he needs a DNA test to be sure. I hate this for Matt. <laughs> I hate this for him. Out of all people that could be his illegitimate child, it got to be possibly Cody. Ugh. Uh, 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 uh. Y'all got to saddle that man with him? No. Matt deserved better than Cody. But it might bring some good drama, I guess. You know, especially between Cody and Maxie being siblings. Yes, I said siblings for somebody that's about to come into my comments. Let me just shut you down right there. They're going to be siblings. I know what some people are going to say. Well, Max, not really Maxie's father. I don't want to hear that mess. That's that's her daddy. We all know who her blood father is, but Mac is is her father. Because, you know, sometimes I got to put that disclaimer out there because you get some people that want to be wackadoos and come in your comments and be like, no, Frisco is her father. Where Frisco at? That man ain't got no relationship with his grandchildren. He never even met these children. So as far as I'm concerned, Mac is her daddy. Mac is the the grandfather to her children. End of discussion. <laughs> like, that's what it is. He raised her. He's been there for her every day. Still there for her. Babysitting them kids. All that. So he does everything a father should be doing. So for all intents and purposes, that's her daddy. Um, But he probably believed that Leopold has something to do with this. Because he felt like, and I agree, that Dominique would have never abandoned a child. Because she always wanted kids. Everybody know that. So I don't believe she would have abandoned it. So he felt like during her stay in Shady Brook or whatever, Leopold must have did something. Probably took the baby. And she probably never knew she even gave birth to a child. Because you know how these rewrites be. Um, you know, and put it that way. Like he gave the child to the Bells or whatever. So they just going off theories right about now. But, you know, hopefully he do get a DNA test and he figure this thing out. You know, and figure out whether or not that's his kid. You know, maybe talk to him and see if he'll do a DNA or secretly get one without telling him, you know, and then tell him if you got proof. So anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought about this episode. I will see you all later. Have a great night. Peace.